Oh Hello, God. everyone, and welcome to Mupo and Friends. We are Emanuela Messina. And I'm Michelle Mupo. And we're brought to you by Mupo TV. And you can catch this show and many others at www.mupotv.com. And if you want to know more about our company or you're looking for a career in the industry or you just want to know about us, go to mupoentertainment.com. And uh, don't forget to download our app on Android and iOS. And stay tuned because our shows are rocking. We have reoccurring guests. One of them's coming up next and happens to be one of my, one of my, one of my favorite. And she told us something once, uh, I think it was the first one or the second time she was on, but she told us something that, that she never told us before. Every time people come on, that's what they do. This is true. They actually share here things exclusively on Mupo TV. And I'm so excited for our guest that's coming up. But we want to say thank you for joining in our show where we love to bring you the celebrities and entrepreneurs you guys all want to know about. So normally what I do is just plug something. Well, I'm going to plug this because we have a magazine that you can actually purchase pre-order right now at uh, Mupo entertainment.com forward slash shop. Yep. And that's where you can go and subscribe to our entertainment magazine, which is coming out very soon. So make sure you guys get your copy. You don't want to miss the first issue. We are going to start off with a huge, huge bang. And it's quarterly. This is very true. So make sure to do that as well as download our app. If you haven't done it yet, it's under Mupo entertainment and it's available on Android and iOS. And where else are we also located? Roku, Fire Stick, Vimeo. Um, we have to go to Vimeo to get the Roku and Fire Stick. But for the record, we're like a Netflix. We're compared to as a Netflix and a, a Hulu right now, from what I'm told. So that's a great thing. That's huge. It's really big. And that's just to show you guys how quickly we are growing. So 144 countries, baby. 100, 144 countries. And growing. So if you haven't done it yet, check us out at www.mupoentertainment.com. Oh, yes. And we are definitely going to take a quick commercial break because I'm not even going to have you ask that I have an awesome week. I didn't even sleep because I was so excited about this guest. I'm pretty excited, too, actually. Uh, I know. <laughs> All right, it's you are my, more, but I'm too. I, I know. You know what? <laughs> it's my favorite show. OK, so right now it's my favorite show. It's been my favorite show for the past couple of seasons, um, but we are going to take a quick commercial break and we will be right back with our special guest. And welcome back to Mupo and Friends. Our special guest today is an actress, producer, and model. Before going into show business, she worked on as a series of diverse jobs, including cocktail waitress at a mud wrestling bar and dressing like a monkey. Finding her calling, she lent her talents to such classic series as Seinfeld, Friends, and ER, and co-starred as Sybil Shepherd's daughter on Sybil. After achieving notary in films like Falling Down and The All-Nighter, she stepped away from the acting for 10 years to raise her two sons and earn a master's in social work from UCLA. She is now in her third season of playing Denise Brisbane in the ABC hit Big Sky. Please welcome Dee Dee Pfeiffer. Hi. Hello, Dee Dee. How are you? Pleasure. Hi, thank you for having me. I am so excited to have you back, Dee Dee. Can I just make a quick correction? I was never a model because I'm like barely five foot. But you're a you model. You are, <laughs> you're a drop dead gorgeous actress. You are on all filters. But also, I wasn't a monkey at the mud wrestling place. I was illegal cocktailing at a female oil and mud wrestling joint. And I was a monkey on the Tahitian float in the Disneyland parade. Those are two different. That's actually could be funny if I was a monkey in the mud pit. Yeah, I don't know. I like to Harry. Yeah, I apologize about that one. No, but so, that's not fun stuff to talk about. No one yeah. really talks about that in my past. <laughs> I, you know what? I'm obsessed with monkeys. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm, sure. surprised. Float. I'm surprised you don't have a monkey since you have a, a million other animals. So we just, uh, 
my son, he literally, ah, we got a Maine Coon. Five months, we, as if we don't have enough animals going on, we just threw a Maine Coon in there. Why not? Are, are you kidding me? Oh, right, we're, we're gonna definitely talk about it um, all, because I know there's, there is questions, but I wanna know what do you attribute to be, like Big Sky's popularity? Like, I, Well, it starts with CJ Box's novels, which were like the number one um, best-selling novels. And then um, David E. Kelly, my brother-in-law, uh, uh, got the rights to them and, and then blew them up and wrote for them in the first 10 episodes. He gave the show to Elwood and Elwood's continuing using CJ's boxes outline of his books to create these amazing storylines and characters. I personally think our show is a hit because in the first season, we are known for not knowing what's going to happen. Like if you saw the pilot, which I'm not going to tell you what happens, but let's just say this. You didn't see it coming. I didn't see it coming. And I've been doing this for 34 years. I didn't see that coming. So we continued on to try to constantly keep the audience on the brink of what the heck's going on with the show. Also, we were just kind of coming out of the pandemic when we aired. So people were really exhausted from all the Netflix and everything else. So we were something new. And also you had to wait once a week to see us, which is very old school. Um, but then a lot of my friends, like they kind of gather up a whole bunch and then they binge it on Hulu because <laughs> they're still into binging. So it's a fun show to do that. And plus we have amazing guest stars, just amazing guest stars and writers. Yeah. And what would you say is the most surprising thing that was revealed in the last two seasons? I can't say, Em, because then I'll spoil it. So believe it or not, there are, there are a couple of people who see Big Sky. I think, hmm. put it this way. Okay, this is the way to say that. Nobody is safe on this show. And just when you fall in love with the characters, <laughs> it might go away and you don't even know how. <laughs> hmm. and so it is a show that <laughs> learns how to deal with grief it's a show where you, you're gonna have to learn how to let go because we're gonna you're gonna fall in love with characters and bye-bye but they're replaced by other ones that are you know just as good we don't like just leave a hole in the show um just before you start crying we replace that person with somebody else who's hmm. just as interesting and exciting to watch so that's that what's is, kind of interesting about our show <laughs> that is true and and what's right? it like because i know the legendary Reba McIntyre has joined the cast. So let's get fancy with that one. <laughs> okay. On Duty Five for Official, I have all these little videos I do about like Denise. I just kind of create like some hype around her. And I did, um, uh, what what the hell does Denise do when no one's looking at Dylan Hoyt when the girls are all solving crimes? Because a lot of my followers ask, what does she do all day long? This is a small town in Montana. It's not like she's doing much, right? And there's this mystery about Denise. A lot of people, my followers, and people who follow the show think I'm actually in on it. They might be right, they might be wrong. I don't even know what Denise is in the script. I don't know until I get the script. That's what's really exciting. They keep the actors also on our toes. So we're not like aligned to y'all. We're just kind of going as we go, right? We learn as we go. Um, so I did all these little vi vi uh, videos of, of people answering the question. And I got um, Reba and Rex, I got um, Jensen, I got my sister, Michelle, I got um, Anya, I got Lindor, a bunch of cast members and friends and family to answer the question, <laughs> what does she do? You gotta look, you gotta check it out. It's hysterical. I saw it. Were, were there answers hysterical? Uh, yeah, I was really surprised. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and then I have like, and then I'm, now my new thing I'm doing is, um, what's in Denise's desk? Condoms. <laughs> People are now going crazy with that. We're just having fun. But I'm gonna we, say condoms are in your desk. <laughs> why not? This, my friend, Deborah Cobo, who's like a CNN reporter, she's amazing. She said panties. She's got very sexy panties. <laughs> <laughs> naughty, naughty. Um, and then, um, we, yeah, we have all these great people on the show. Reba, when I met her, I was such a babbling idiot. I was like, uh, 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 you don't understand. I really, I really like, I, and she just goes, come here, you. And she just gives me this. Oh, I love it. <laughs> that she cool. loves Denise's character. That went right to my heart. When she said, I really like your character. I was like, ah! that was when I was wearing the coolest boots ever because I'm a boot girl. And she goes, I have those boots. I said, no, you don't. She's yeah, I do. I'm like, okay, we're on. So now we're going to go and have lunch in our cool boots. And I asked her, if she wants to go UFO hunting with me. And she said, she's up. How can you not love a redhead who was willing to go UFO hunting? That that's on point. And I saw an alien. I just want to tell you, we're going to talk off. off. I'm going to tell you what I saw. Yeah, I'm sure you do. No, I know. I know, because you and I believe the same, we have the same beliefs. It's just amazing. Actually, I hate to be, most of the people in the United States and around the country and the world 
have this belief because they've seen things or things have happened to them. And then mm. you have others who are saying that we're crazy, but now the government says we're not crazy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> be called crazy we knew all this it's like all of those who us who always believed that there was something else greater than us because we're not narcissistic and arrogant that there's got to be something going on <laughs> and these people all have stories right they got some stories that they don't want to be in that club of having yeah. things where all the people in their community call them crazy they don't want to be in that club and those are the ones you got to really listen to the ones who actually don't want that kind of attention but they're saying i saw something i'm telling you that was it was not of anything that i've ever seen before and i'm not scared of that i'm i, I think that stuff's cool <laughs> wow well, what a time to be alive guys right that's <laughs> true it's a time to be alive okay i want to know can yeah. you give us any hints of what's come to come in season three and goals you from supernatural who's just yummy he and denise have a very funny team there's this running gag with him and denise i can't tell you but it's really fun obviously when we did our scene Catherine and kylie play cassie and um uh uh jenny <laughs> in this scene they were like oh denise because <laughs> they didn't see it coming nor nice. did Justin. <laughs> they kept it in i'll just that's a hint um, okay so let's see what else is going on. So you're going to have Bo, which is Jensen and Jenny running off doing like um, solving one crime per episode. And then the main storyline will be um, with Reba and Rex and um, Luke playing her son, um, this Australian actor, uh, Luke Mitchell. And I oh, just have like so many characters. Rosanna Arquette. No, wow. Rosanna's playing Catherine's mom in an episode. So wow. we have like literally this season and the storylines again are kind of like, uh, they're all over, but they do connect. So I put it this way, um, just tune in and check it out. It, it's going to be a crazy season. Super fun. You will not be disappointed. For sure. yeah, you definitely won't be disappointed because <laughs> the when the first season happened, I will not go to a rest stop ever again. I don't give a crap where I'm not going. Okay. Well, and, well, I'm driving back to New Mexico. I'm in LA right now. Oh, and I'm Jesus. I'm driving <laughs> and my sisters are flipping out. My sons are like, you're fine. Like I wouldn't mess with my mom at a truck stop. I'm like, <laughs> but I'm bringing my dog. It's okay. I got a big yeah. Ass. But you know, it's funny. Cause a lot of like a lot of the Mickey James, she's a WWE diva or ex diva. Now she's on another thing. She would call me when she's driving three o'clock in the morning. I'm on the phone until like 6 AM with her. And she's across the country and she's like talking to me and I'm up because I hardly ever sleep, yeah. and, um, which you can too. call me too. If you, if you want to drive in the dark and, and just have nothing, you know, you want to rant, but it, I got to tell you, she, we stopped at, we used to stop at truck stops. Like it was nothing. And now I will not even go to one. Probably not a good idea unless you really, really, really got to go pee. <laughs> and even then, I, I don't know. They got these things now where you can get the cup and you put, yeah. You guess, well, uh, if you haven't seen the show, the reason why is our show ha took place in, in Montana and it started off with these two girls just going on, like me, going on a road trip. <laughs> and then it go went south hardcore into yeah. Creepville where you're just like, whoa. But these are not unattainable characters. These are people that you probably meet every day that behind mm. closed doors. I loved Ronald. Shit going on. <laughs> you know what I mean? I loved his character. Ronald's character? I just was like, oh my God. Ronald, yes, Brian's character, Ronald. Oh, he we have also do that a lot where we have these characters that you love to hate. It's a love yes. hate. Mm. You do that a lot. Yeah. That's why it's hard to see your party is like, can you just arrest that guy or just kill him? <laughs> so and the other party is like, well, but he had childhood issues. I mean, with a mother like that, do you blame him? Oh my god, she was so sick. And then you just and then you go, oh, he's got a soft spot, you know, for like Jesse and Ronald and all that, or Jerry and Ronald. I love Jesse. I, I gotta tell you, everyone that they pick on the cast is amazing. Everyone. And you guys have chemistry that is just like the coolest thing ever. But who is your closest friend on set? Um, definitely, definitely Jesse. Definitely Jesse. Right on. Trying to see if I was going to get in trouble. Who would I get in trouble? With? Well, Brian and I were really tight, Ronald. Um, but he was going back and forth a lot, so he was hard to pin down for coffee. Um, <laughs> Jesse is more. Well, she's just like she would call me. And we would. You no, know, she FaceTimes me all the time. Well, if she if I had a face like hers. I FaceTime everyone too, but I look down and I will reject it, decline it. 
call her back. Like, did you just reject my FaceTime, bitch? I said, yes, I did. Can't you be like a normal person and just call? Why do you have to look at me? She said, I want to see your face. I said, no, you don't. It's 8.30 in the morning. <laughs> I did not sleep well last night. And um, so I love her. She and I got through the Canadian first season of pandemic quarantine. We both went through it twice. Actually, I went through it three times. Being locked up two weeks by yourself. Wow. It was, the first season was really tough. Um, so to this day, Jesse and I are really still really tight. I love I, her. I love her. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. And with regards to getting input from the characters and storylines, are you guys able to do that? Yeah. The writers who are also producers are on the set. And when there's something that comes up that seems glaringly out of character, um, or maybe doesn't lace through the storyline, like how come I'm calling this the creepy kill, creepy heart murders over here, but over here we call it something else. So I'll say mm. I already mentioned it is that oh they're like oh yeah great good catch, make make it consistent you don't confuse the audience. They're great that way yeah. That's um, amazing. What's nice is that we know our characters, but yet they know the whole story. Because think about it, we come in from a very linear perspective. It's me, myself, myself, and Denise. The world according to Denise, the world according to Jenny, the world according to, right? But they come in with the whole series, the whole show episode in their heads. And there is a dance, right? And a, and a mood, there's a tone, there's all this stuff that has to be laced together. So sometimes, especially me, I go off. <laughs> I'll be like, and then Denise should be on her head. They're like, wow okay as funny as that is cd <laughs> not sure that's gonna work or what this is what they do to me all the time they'll film one just to humor me and then go now let's go back to the script and then of course they don't use the one that i just suggest not all Aww. sometimes oh. it, sometimes it lands because it matches with the tone sometimes i forget about the tone of our show i think it's like i said it's the world according to denise and they're like it is but it's not there's other things going on <laughs> I'm like, really? There's something else going on in, in the show, but Dylan Hoyt. Um, so yeah, I can see you doing your own show though, too, because you're just you're just a character. Let's do it. Yeah, I'm no, like, I'm I'm serious. We can even <laughs> do it on Mupo anytime you're ready. So tell us about your brand new rescue animals that you have. Dude, well, mm, um, well, the one I got now, who I'm gonna be traveling back to uh New Mexico with Great Pyrenees. I rescued her last year in Albuquerque. She was a pandemic pup. She, her mother and all of her litter were thrown back to the pound or the shelter, really in bad shape, all of them. So this amazing rescue um, service called Argos went and got them out, cleaned them all up, got a medical attention, found foster care homes. And that's when my son was clearly not doing homework online and um, was surfing animals because we don't have enough. Like, I'm like, what are you doing? He comes in, hey, mom, this pup. No, what do you, don't show it to me. Don't do, don't do it. Oh, <laughs> very cool. How do you think he'd be clean that way? Oh, so sweet. Yeah. Because he was raised by the oh, best. To show it, show her to me. And then I said, well, we'll just meet her. Okay, we'll just meet her. That's it. Well, she never left. Yeah. And oh. now she's laying on the only uh, uh, grid that the cold air comes out of on the floor. She's laying on there. So the rest of us are hot. It's 110 degrees in LA today. And she's laying on there. Hey, 110. Can we have some cold air. I should show you what she looks like. She's yeah, like, please do. Please Aww. do. This is my crazy dirty kitchen. Let's see. See? There. Ah. Oh. There she is. Aww. Oh, so sweet. There she is. Laying she's beautiful. Laying on <laughs> the only air duct that we have. But but she's also on IG with you too. So she is gorgeous she's all over my instagram so is um, my other rescue um uh spartacans and um she's a 10 year old uh, roddy mix and then we have uh, lenny who's from a kill shelter and then my son's new main coon Mor morpheus do you still have the bird no she went to the light last year oh i'm so sorry oh yeah it's actually interesting it's funny you bring that up I lost a lot of weight from last season to this season. And a lot of people thought I was sick because it was a pretty quick weight loss. I hadn't even realized I'd lost weight. It was grief from having lost my cut. You were heartbroken. Yeah. I didn't even realize until I came back and my wardrobe was like, fucked. Like this used to be really baggy. I think I wore the same shirt Michelle last time we met. But anyways, I didn't realize I'd lost weight because grief is real, man. That, that, that shit is real. It um, is. And yeah. You know, Michelle, I woke up every morning. She take, she and I had coffee together and toast. I don't know. It hit me hard. I did not see it coming. 
I've had a lot oh, of I'm so sorry, honey. And people in my life. I don't know that little cockatoo, big cockatoo. <laughs> she, yeah, she kneecapped me. That one took me down for a minute. So oh, I'm so sorry. We're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back with our amazing guest. <laughs> back to Mupo and friends and our special guest is Dee Dee Pfeiffer. So I want to know how weird it was to see a professor use falling down in a psych class. Oh my god it was uh <laughs> when I went into college I went in like undercover. I mean I turned my hair brown started eating carbs right away gained the freshman was it freshman 20 10? I took that to a whole nother level. It was a freshman 50. I just was like carbs. Well, for 30 plus years, I hadn't eaten a carb. So other than, you know, so I just really went undercover. So I was sitting there in the back of the class, like I always sat. And this professor um, said, uh, oh, he had on the syllabus, the movies that we were going to watch and then analyze when it was falling down. And I was like, oh, that's a little odd. So I went up to him and I said, this is odd. Um, the movie we're supposed to watch next week um, I don't know how to say this. And he already really liked me because I was the one who always, you know, raised my hand and got my homework in early. Really, this is my psych teacher. So, and I was a psych major. So I was like, yeah. So I said, well, this is weird. I was, I guess, and still am an actor and I'm in that movie. And he's like, what? You're in that movie. He got really excited. I said, no, 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 hold on. This might be a little weird for me. I know the movie inside and out, literally from the perspective of my the background. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the academic background, I always felt like an imposter, right? And then now all of a sudden we're going into my background. I said, I'm not sure how objective I can really be. It's especially, yeah, because I really, yeah, the way I always approach my characters is very through a psychological lens, right? So he, first of all, he couldn't get over. He's like, wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait a minute, you're the one we're going. I was like, oh, so, yeah. so um, but then he's really flattering. He loved, he goes, oh, well, I can change the movie, it's no big deal. I said, well, you don't have to change it. I just don't, I'm all about getting the A's you know, my pal and cow grants, right? I'm like, I, so I just want, I'm not sure objective I could be. He says, no, that's okay, we can choose another movie. But after that, he always had his little eye on me in the back corner, like trying, the wheels were going, cause I had another professor also go, you look familiar, were you in one of my other classes? And I'm like, this is my first, no, I'm thinking all oh, shit. I drove people crazy cause I looked familiar but they couldn't figure out where they had seen me. And they did not expect to see me there in a community college sitting there going, Dorothy in the back of the, going, excuse me, I have a question. <laughs> I have a question, you know. So they didn't expect, they knew I was a little odd. <laughs> or like, Dorothy's odd. But she gets A's, so be her friend. Um, <laughs> because Dorothy has a learning disability. She works her ass off. Okay, so it takes you guys a minute to write 10 pages. It takes me two weeks. So you know, but right. I, and I also keep asking for help. I tutored like crazy. I, you know, they tested me so for learning disabilities, which I discovered in college. I went through elementary school thinking I was dumb. I was not, mm. just didn't, they didn't understand dyslexia. They didn't understand um, a reading processing issue. You know, all these things that I, they found out. And then I had accommodations in the disabilities office and oh my God, it went from str struggling to A's. Mm. I just, it took me longer, but that was okay once I got over that, like, right, yeah. Hmm. And, and, you know, being that you are the coolest girl out there, so what is the key for being your most authentic self? Like, if somebody is, like, you know, nerdy like me, like, how would you get me to be cool? Well, I know I'm cool now, but, I mean. Well, I was going to say, I think cool is subjective, right? Okay. Meaning, okay, here's a good example. I will say to my sons who are 16 and 20, oh my God, look, isn't this really cool? They're like, mom, no, no, it's not. I'm like, yeah, that is, I'm telling you, me and my friends, we would say that's cool. And they're like, yeah, like 50 years ago. Okay, wow. Okay, that's ageism. I don't appreciate that. <laughs> so um, 
my sons and I were smart asses. But so I always say, now I know this is cool. I know this is cool. They're telling me it's not. So I think what cool, what is cool anymore is it used to be a definition. We used to have literally a picture of what was cool and what a picture of what was nerdy. I think that's all blown out of the water now. This new generation, they don't accept these stupid like titles and groupings mm -hmm. of people anymore. People, my, my friends or my kids, that generation and my friends um, are like, oh, just throw that old stereotype out. If you think it's cool, it is cool. More importantly, is it a matter of wanting to be cool or honor one's authentic self? Let's get back to that. For me, it's my sobriety. Because I know when I'm active in my disease, I'm not my best self. I might on, on occasions be fun while drinking on occasions. There's also those really ugly times. Sorry, they go together. I'm sorry, that's addiction. Sorry. So I know that ever since the day I've been... Um, since the day I got sober and it's not been an easy journey, but an interesting one, but life isn't easy. So why would recovery be any different? This is why I think right. so we talk about recovery with the glue is really hard. Life is hard, dude. What the, yeah. Okay. And what, where do you, where do you want it to be easy? It's hard for everybody, whether you're a normie or an addict, right? So the, I'm sorry, my phone's blowing up. I have to get my hair colored today. <laughs> <laughs> I got to be more red like you, girl, because um, I'm, I'm traveling back to New Mexico. I got to get more red like Denise. So I just think it's it all comes down to like who you are inside and your authentic self. And I know that when you have your, your disease is activated or your mental health is not addressed, assessed and treated, or there's just something going on around you, you that you can't be in touch with that authentic self is when it's noisy and muddied and you're not really near like harmony and, and being happy, right? Yeah. I yeah. think that you end up looking cool. Cause I think the definition of cool, I think people who who, can, who are close to our authentic self or owning that and are not afraid to say, hey, this the world is noisy. Let's just stop this. I'm not gonna do this right now. I'm gonna stay with the positive people. I'm going to, right? I'm gonna be part of the solution, not the problem. That's, that's freaking cool in my book. Oh yeah, my my whole friends changed completely. Like, oh my, God. yeah, they kind of have to. Yeah, it's like either you roll with me or you move. You know. Yeah, and it, it's a it's a grief. It's a there's grieving there, the loss of oneself of, of how you used to be. Like when I go by happy hours, I my heart sinks. I love happy hours more than anything, truly. And happy hours were going to kneecap me, and they were going to kill me. Bottom line. And then I yeah. ask myself, would I have everything I have right now? Had I still been in those happy hours? No. Hmm. So you kind of learn to leave space and, and um, grieve those times that were nice and fun at the happy hours. <sighs> kind of like I grieve Panny, my cockatoo. It yeah. leaves space for it, honor it and love it, take care of it, and then you know, put it in its place and then go and fill it up with other light and love and um, what's the truth. Because the truth is when I was using, I wasn't my best self bottom line and that's a true i'm proud of you right and i'm proud of you too you went through your 50 without drinking i 55, know 55 55 look at she dropped me five years <laughs> that's so good i got so much out of that one. Oh my god thank you for sharing that was incredible thank you thank you thank you, thank you. so good so I know you're not uh, fond of change. I don't think a lot of people are, but what is the most important challenging shift in your life and how did you cope with it? Um, I think it's on a daily basis, my narrative. To mm -hmm. be honest. My narrative, nobody talks worse to oneself than oneself. Like mm -hmm. my narrative can be so ugly and so mean. It's shocking when I were to say it out loud what my thoughts are saying, right? And I know a lot of us have, this. a lot of people have their narrative is so cruel that you would never say that out loud to somebody else. So why would I be so mean to myself? Where did that, why did that happen? When, when did that happen? You know, I'm not sure if that stuff is as important as um, the why. I mean, it is and it isn't as much as just being mindful that it's there. At least for me, four years sober, I can say, okay, wow. That narrative is not helpful. Helpful. That that thing I just said to myself just made me feel like crap. What was that about? God, man, that was that was like a, a drive by, you know? Because like I do this when I start to get a crush on somebody. The minute I get it, I start to get a little baby crush. I go, oh, well, he's gonna think you're 
He's going to think you're dot, 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 too old, too, too wrinkly, to talk too much, crazy. Oh, he's probably a normie. He will drink. I don't drink. You know, all of a sudden, my narrative just kneecaps me out of nowhere. And it's like, then all of a sudden, I just talk myself out of having a crush and walk away and go, oh, what was that about, Dee? Dee? <laughs> yeah, because you can get anybody you want. You could, you could even get Jason Momoa, I bet. Oh, I know it. I, <laughs> I love I, him. I picture he's hot, yeah. Yeah. Um, Dean Snyder, the, el- the lion guy. He, the yeah, the, the lion guy. I was going to say the blonde. Yeah. The blonde so blonde. if you want to marry him, then You're you right just right. put it out in the universe. I think about him a lot. I'm putting it out in the universe. I, <laughs> I can help you. With that, a lot of us do. I'm going to help you with that. Um, it's so interesting. You think, oh, Judy Viper, she's got all these things. You know, she did. She probably didn't get anybody. That is not true. If it was true, then I would be with somebody right now. Let me tell you, I'm not the only because I have issues like everybody else when it comes to this narrative. So when you say obstacles to get over, I think it's on a daily basis trying to take my narrative by the, you know what, and squeeze them and say stop it, <laughs> stop it, because because the first thing I was taught to do with my narrative is to question it like you would a, a prosecutor. Where are the facts that support? Right this thing you just said okay let's just say i'm i don't know whatever right you literally have to question it like you would something on in a court yeah you got to stop thinking like a green personality and start thinking like a red personality just take action because you can have anything you want in life anything i know that is shit that i preach and i believe in that well yeah you preached it to me in my head i know and on my instagram (laughs) the reason why i do that because i'm hoping that it bounces back at me because i'm not (laughs) saying it because I'm a hypocrite and and I just want everybody is to like, do well and it doesn't apply to me it absolutely applies to me but I'm a hard head and I don't know if you notice this it's a lot easier to help other people and educate other people and say well I just wouldn't call him back and then you, you're in that position and you're like oh I, I had to call him back because it's been two days and he might be hurt no he's ghosting you Dee Dee do not call break I'm gonna hear him no <laughs> do not call him back right but did you ever think he's afraid well, then you go through all that. Maybe he got hit by a car. Maybe he's in the hospital. Maybe, maybe he got hurt. hit by a car. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe he and didn't tell you his wife came back around and said, what the hell are you doing? You know, um, maybe he's gay and his boyfriend came in and said, hey, what are you, you know, I don't know. There's a lot of things that have happened to me in the dating world that have been, oh, oh, I didn't see that one coming, right? Um, hmm. Down to even being ghost. You know, I mean, I was, I flirted with a guy a few months ago and then he just stopped. He just stopped. Yeah, I saw, I saw you post that. You know what? It, yeah. It's his loss because you know what? You're the... Back. Like, wait a minute, did I say something? Did, literally, did I say something? You go back and you go back and you go back and you read it five times going, wait a minute, we were just grooving and then he disappeared. I should have mm. three more times. And they were like, oh, hell no. No, no, no. Something, Something's up with that one. So just walk away. But of course, yeah. I'm, there's I'm someone like, out there that's better for you. Well, yeah. Or who knows? Like maybe he got maybe he's in the hospital, and I'm over here pouting. I don't know. I mean, I'm not. They, they haven't <laughs> seen your <laughs> greatness. Oh, Ronald <laughs> got to him. <laughs> friends, like, there's so many things that can happen. But meanwhile, you're on here, and the the worst thing I can do is throw my narrative in there. He stopped calling you because you're old, because you're all these things, you know, that we just do, which is just so. I'm gonna say congratulations on being sober for four years. Yeah. And I know it's changed your life. So tell us mm-hmm. a little bit how it's changed your life because you're, you're like on fire right now. Um, thank you. Internally. I feel like it's been a rebirth. And I think mm-hmm. a lot of people including yourself probably would describe it like that because when you're active in your disease, you're slowly killing yourself. I'm sorry. That's just the bottom line. That's really scary to hear and hard to say hear that people. It is the yeah. truth. It wasn't until I went into rehab. Yes. In my fifties going through menopause, talk about sexy. Ha <laughs> ha. Right. There it is. And going, what happened to me that I'm here in this intensive inpatient rehab? Didn't see my kids, my family for, you know, 30 days. Um, and just on the floor crying like a child, like dry heat. Yeah. It was bad. The trauma was just oozing out of my body. I didn't realize that was in there. It was just all this stuff. And, you know, when you start to peel the onion and you're around other people who understand you, who get you. And by the way, I always felt like an outcast. I always felt like I didn't fit. Me in. too. Yeah, yeah. And guess what? I went to rehab and I found my peeps. Hmm. Found my peeps. I didn't know their names. I didn't know who they were. And I learned eventually their stories. But let me tell you, to this day, 
like, you know, Michelle, when you told me you were sober, I'm like, you're my girl, you're my peep. I get it. It's like, it's a strange club to be involved with, but a beautiful club. Because name anybody, what other group of people work so damn hard to stay alive every day? Because that's what we're doing. We're trying to stay alive because I know you, like me, have lost friends to, to, re, to relapse. Yes, yes. They went out and they didn't make it back. They went right to the light. 17 year old, my, my son's best friend. Oh my God. He used to sleep on my couch. He was like my son. Fentanyl, done. Wow. I had to bury him, wow. did the eulogy, the whole damn thing. A guy 20 years old I went to rehab with, Trev, loved him. Went out, gone. Bye-bye. So it's, it's real. This, this is real. Yeah, and I don't think they realize like, I, for instance, mm-hmm. I was addicted to. It's very American to not really understand something until it brushes up against you or it happens to you, which is kind yeah. of okay. It's sad that that's the truth, right? It's like taxes don't hurt until you get yeah. gouged. When you start to make the money, then they gouge you, you know, unless you're those people who can get around that. But, um, which I don't know how to do that because I keep getting gouged. But the bottom line is, unless it happens to you, but I think right now I'm telling you, it's really almost rare now not to meet somebody who doesn't know somebody who's an addict, it, whether it's food, uh, drugs, gambling, sex, shopping. Addiction is a thing. It's a disease. It's not a choice. It is. And yeah. Anne, you know, Anne Hayes just left the light. She was struggling with it too. And I noticed a lot of, she got a lot of backlash. And I, and I did, uh, I made a comment, I think the only time to one of those where I said, hold on, hold on. First of all, she has children, number one. That's someone's mm-hmm. mom who went to the light too soon from addiction. Addiction's a disease, not a choice. Any more than someone getting cancer is a choice. And don't say, well, she smoked, she deserved lung cancer. Really? I know people who lung cancer who've never smoked. So stop saying these things that don't hold any truth, number one, and all they mm-hmm. do is hurt and not help. But that's been part of the problem, not the solution, right? Mm-hmm. Having compassion for each other and support and if you don't understand something that's okay just say man i don't understand what that's like i have and no idea and that's okay that's an answer you know what's crazy Dee, Dee, you know and i know if you slip say like i was doing like oxycontins when i was assaulted right and they i was doing a lot of them like oxycontin paraffin forte percocet demo all that stuff right and it, it took a lot for me like i went through sweats throwing up it was crazy right now just let me tell you something awesome. if i were to if i were to go back to that even if I would have thought, hey, like you get people that that do stuff and then go back to it, they die because their body's not used to it anymore. Mm-hmm. That's what people don't understand is that you build a tolerance, right? Start with one glass of wine, then turn that to a bottle, and then it's two bottles, three bottles, four, a bottle and a bottle of vodka, right? Right, And that's your tolerance. That's what you're doing every day or the amount of pills that you're doing every day. Then when you get clean, which by the withdrawals are no joke, mm. that is the devil's drug. The withdrawal takes a year. Yep. A wow. year, which is really hard and scary. And that's why most relapse because it is very hard to stay on the path of recovery when the withdrawals are nasty. That's why in rehab and all rehabs call meth the devil's drug. Um, so, um, oh my, I was, wow. I was so profound. I lost my thought. <laughs> what did I say? Could have You're been talking about the drugs. You're talking about <laughs> Um, that it takes a year and with that like does it do you find that like over time it gets easier to to... oh my god yes the Mm. the worst days in recovery are not as bad as the worst days when you're acting in your disease um like that that is for sure like Mm. i'm very hard on myself still to this day because of that there's i think that's probably one of the hardest things for an addict is self-forgiveness of what's happened in the past that is truly hard. That's why for some people using the steps in AA are really important because if there's there's room in, in the steps for forgiveness around the board um, for other than yourself. Um, I still have that. I certainly have that. Um, that's when I have to remind myself there is no healing back there. Back there meaning in the past. Mm-hmm. That's back there. It's gone. It's done. Yeah. No healing back there. And there's no healing in the future because it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> That's future tripping. <laughs> <laughs> the healing is right here in the now. So when you do get that overwhelming feeling of guilt of something you did back there, remember you're giving something back there that already happened a lot of energy right now. And then if you think of it that way, it's so yeah. stupid. It's like, what yeah. am I doing? Now, I'm not saying your feelings are stupid because that is not the truth. I'm saying is that that already happened. It's gone. It's, it's like, kind hey, of, you can't bring it back. Dude, it's back there. 
But what you can do is today say, wow, I'm not doing that today. Mm -hmm. A big breath and pat yourself on the back and say, today, Mm -hmm. I'm not doing what I did back then. Otherwise, back then is right now in, in the now, right? This is kind of wordy. I'm sorry, but you know what I'm saying? Because what I, when I do pull up shit from my past, I, I have to remind myself there's no healing back there. There is no healing back there. There's healing right here in the now. And look at you now with your talk show, you got red hair, you know, you got M, you got me. This is the now. This, this is like by fact and truth. This is the truth. What's happening right now. What happened back then has already happened. It's true. It's truthful that it happened a long time ago, but there's no power back there. I know, but you, you Hmm. just consulting me all the time is just, you have no idea the motivation you give me. That's why, you know, like, like even before I go out, I, I I like hit DD up. I don't go out because I don't want to be in that spot. And then I knew I had to go out on my birthday, but it's just, it's, I don't know. And I just am grateful for very good for you. Have to say you didn't have to go out. No, you actually did not have to. You actually, I know to. that's true. So I had, <laughs> I mean, she said to me, you need to take, have to take a year off of your, my last year mm-hmm. of, of a 10 year journey of college at UCLA, my last year. And she looked at me and said, you need to take a year off of sobriety. You, if you go back now, you're going to relapse. And I was like, wow, that's why would you even say that? Why would you put that out there? I said, no, but I'm feeling great. Oh my God. And she's like, I'm telling you right now, there's no way. So she said, I was saying, I have to go back. I have one more year of college. I have to go back. She goes, you know, you don't have to go back. You keep telling yourself that. She goes, I don't have to go to work today, but I like to go to work because I like having a home. I like having food. I like having a car. So that makes me want to go to work even though some days work sucks, right? But I don't have to, but if I don't go to work, then I don't have a home. with the amazing actress um all time coolest person ever my friend dd pfeiffer and dd um we're gonna i know we were talking about recovery and mental health you know not one size fits all so what's the best way to seek appropriate health um i think help or health health help 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 help. i said health too i know i'm well (laughs) health wealth happiness help Coffee. I don't know if you want to ask me help. Um, <laughs> um, I think the it's such a confusing thing for me to answer. And I'll tell you why, because I can see it from a clinical perspective and then a patient perspective, having um, my degrees and then also be a patient. The, the hardest thing for me is the assessment. The assessments are cookie cutter. And they have to check the box. If they check the box and you get the diagnosis, get the diagnosis, then you get the insurance pays for it. And then they give you a treatment plan, which is all fine. My concern with diagnosing people, sometimes some people don't like to be labeled something that can actually destroy them. And that can actually handicap them in their own right by running around saying, I have bipolar or I have, you know, such and such. And they can use that as, as, as a way to maybe kind of stay stuck, Right. And then there are those who find the diagnosis helpful and empowering. Oh, now I know I'm not crazy. I have such and such, this and this, right? And then of course you have, there's meds versus non-meds. I'm not pro or con anything. I think whatever works for you. It's very individual. No two addicts are alike. No two people bipolar are alike. No people with schizophrenia are alike. They all have different biologies. They have different environments. They have different cultures. They have different everything. Even twins are different. Right. So for me, I think it's finding somebody who you resonate with and ask the questions, be honest with them. Just say, I'm not crazy about this. I don't like this, but I want to be part of my treatment plan. And and if you're vocal and if that person is resistant to you being part of your treatment plan, then find somebody else. And in every clinic, they have other people. They, people switch all the time, like their underwear. It's okay. Don't, I don't want to hear (laughs) that feeling. He's or she is fine. And if their feelings are hurt, shame on them. We're taught in college not to um, 
transfer your, your emotions and stuff onto your client. So that's on them, but you need the best care you can. And if you need to leave your therapist for somebody else, I know it's hard, but trust me, they're a big girl, big boy, big they, they'll be fine. And if not, then they have to go to their therapist and figure out why they're transferring their, their shit onto you. And then you can continue like you would, I would hope, with a good dentist. If you go to a dentist and they make you bleed all over the place and they're really rough and they're rude, I would hope you go find a different dentist. Please go find a different dentist. That guy needs to be put out of business. He shouldn't be like going at people's mats like that, right? right. Is what we're afraid to go. You go find another dentist. And I think mental health is no different. Find someone you group with, ask them you want to be part of the treatment plan, ask them if they're open to possibly meds in conjunction with something else or no meds or all meds. Some people just say, give me a pill. And I'm, I want to be left alone. I mean, everybody's different, but you have to ask yourself, you know, what works for you. Um, also, I would demand a full head to toe physical, all blood work, everything. Because a lot of diagnoses are misdiagnosed because it's actually a, a physical issue. You know, low iron makes you very fatigued, which can create depression and can look like something else. So now hmm. they're actually treating you for something that looks like, say, depression or looks like A, B, or C, when it's actually a medical condition. Hmm. Low testosterone, estrogen, iron, vitamin B3. There's a whole bunch of stuff, especially if you're an addict. Are you kidding me? You ruined your body all those years. You think you're just now going to be like, stop drinking and your body goes, okay, we're all, we're all fine now. Hell no. Your body's going, what the hell did you do? You need a professional doctor first to give you a head to toe physical to check all your counts and then go to a treatment plan. Because you might be treating something that's actually a, a physical thing, like a, an iron shot or taking iron supplements might actually help. Because I was low iron and I was seriously depressed because I had no energy. And I thought yeah. it was something and it turned out it was just low iron. Especially I mean, I can't take vitamin B. I have to take soluble vitamin B, but I got a DNA test and a blood test. Yeah, all that, all that. Any Because you do have to, I would first to remove any biological, physical things that might be happening first, right? or alongside an assessment and a possible treatment plan for something else that they think you are. Because my friend was being um, <laughs> treated for bipolar and that was, that was not it. She was actually addicted. She was an addict, but she was mm -hmm. lying to them. She was lying to the doctor. So they were treating something that wasn't really going on until she got sober. And then they, you know, she ended up with a, a little depression and anxiety. Um, but like, I'm on a little bit of Lexapro. I take 10% of Lexapro for the last six years. Normally they want to bump it up. And I say, no, I'm good because a little bit just creates a foundation. So I don't bottom out with my anxiety. I still get anxiety, but I don't bottom out where it kneecaps and where I can't function. Hmm. Just this teeny bit. And then my skills, my anti-anxiety skills in conjunction with a teeny bit of Lexapro for me is like a really good mixture, but that's it. I won't let them add more to it because I can find other skills, you know, or, or, or things to do to help my anxiety. What's crazy is when I got my DNA, I was on 240 milligrams of armor thyroid because I was allergic to everything else because of all the drugs I took. And I, when I did my DNA and I'm doing these vitamins, these supplements that based off of your DNA, I'm at 60 milligrams right now. So it's, it's true. Very little just to keep level. Well, you're not supposed to use medicines to wipe out your feelings, to wipe out your depression, to wipe out your, that is not what they're there for. And that's a big mistake. Here's a pill, go away, your depression goes away. No, no, no. It's only the way I see they're supposed to be used and effectively used is when they use just to help give you a, um, like a platform, a ground, a net underneath you a little bit. So you don't bottom out. You're still going to have those feelings, but not as great so that you can then pull in skills. You know, whether you meditate or exercise or like, I don't meditate because I'm too hyper, but I definitely walk my dogs. You know, I stop and try to breathe and I'll stretch and I'll just do funny. I dance around the kitchen. That's like <laughs> getting rid of a lot of my yayas. I mean, I just find the craziest ways to get rid of some of those extra stuff that normally would say, oh my God, I'm still feeling anxiety. I need, I need more. And it's like, actually, are you bottoming out? No. Well, then I think you're actually on just the right level now pull in something else in conjunction with that because for me it's all about moderation but we're not really in a society or a world yet where we're 100 we're, we're convinced that that's the answer we're still kind of like just give me a pill make it go away amen you know, mm. a pill make it go away yeah I mean, I so that, i was like that too <laughs> and what would you say to someone who thinks of getting help is a weakness 
Okay, I love that question. Let me tell you why. Because mm -hmm. I grew up thinking that my dad was a big German man and you didn't feel it. If something happened, you got back up, brushed it off and go. And that was <laughs> strong. That was a tough. You didn't cry, right? This is yeah. very old school. And that's and one of the reasons why I spiraled out was with addiction and, and trauma and stuff because I was taught that that was weak. Now, I'm telling you something right now, personally, having gone and was afraid to ask for help. It almost killed me because I didn't know how to ask for help because I thought it was weak. Let me tell you, stepping into that rehab was one of the, all the strength that I ever had, it took me to walk in that door and stay there for 30 days. There was nothing weak about that. Mm. Are you kidding me? That was one of, the, it takes one strong mother to say, I, I'm not gonna do this anymore and I'm going to change and take your addiction by the, you know what, and ask for help. And then to continue like Michelle and all of us in recovery to every day say, God damn it, I'm not gonna go back. I'm not, that is tough. That is not weak. People <laughs> are so funny that people always think, oh, well, you know, asking for help. My boys, I'm like, just ask for help guys. We're still like afraid to say, ask for help. I said, it takes a man to say, hey man, I need some help, get over here. And it takes a strong woman to say, I can't do this, I need help. I love it. It, it does. Good. Right, Michelle? I mean, what, how is it weak to every day not use something that we used to use like that to make the pain go away? <laughs> right? That no, is, it's, it's true. It, 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 like, oh, you're strong saying, I'm not going to take that hit. I'm not going to take that drink. I'm not going to go shop or whatever it is that you do, right? Yeah, I just keep looking at a picture of Jason <sighs> Momoa, you know, <laughs> but oh, <laughs> the puppy dog. Oh. That's mine in the back. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, well, um, I know now I know you do your Instagrams, right? And mm -hmm. um, do you really do them off the cuff or are they, you know, scripted like no, I do them reality off the cuff. shows. They're off, they're off the cuff, but let me let me I'm not gonna lie that I will redo them. <laughs> I'll have a random <laughs> thought and I'll find just the right light and just the right hat because I have bad hair day, or you know, wherever I'm feeling it, wherever I'm in New Mexico or here, and then I'll do it. And then I'll look at it and go, okay, that's really stupid. And sometimes I'll redo them like two or three times, or I just let them go out. Sometimes you'll see where I go, okay, this is really stupid. It's not going to land. And then I'll post it. And those get the most views though. Uh, you, you have know, to admit. I know it's stupid. <laughs> but they get the most views when you say that. Like when you. Yeah. When you're real transparent. Yeah. Part of yeah. sobriety is being, that's, that's also something else. Think about moving back to the weak thing. What other group of people are trying so hard to be good people? Listen, a dry drunk is not a pretty person. Okay, I'm just gonna say that. So it's <laughs> to not use and become an asshole or to become a better person having been sober. And that's the challenge on a daily basis. And everyone I meet who's in recovery are people who really are trying. And I love that. How would you not wanna be around people who are trying really hard to make a difference in a positive way? Yeah. Um, okay. we're, we're gonna take a quick commercial break. with dd pfeiffer and i want to know you have sons which is amazing i have two girls have you encouraged oh, your sons to find their passion my boys <laughs> <laughs> did you have encouraged them to follow their passion do what, are my boys going to follow me as an actor all right have you encouraged your sons to follow their passion oh yes 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 um i i have very odd very normal children they're not interested in the, in the industry at all. They refuse to go premieres with me. I can't even get a picture of them, let alone a, a, put them on my Instagram. And they care very much about me making an ass of myself on social media. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you become one of those celebrities who gets all mouthy and opinionated. I'm like, okay, okay, I won't. Um, Cause I know I can get on my soapbox. I said, I just I want to help people. I want to help people. And they're like, okay, but do it in a way that's not embarrassing. I said, okay, um, that's fair. That's fair. Um, they're very normal. They, the one loves to forge. He forges, he makes Damascus knives, you know, like forging oh, wow. gorgeous knives. He's a 16 year old. He also is a welder, not interested in school. He's finishing his last year in, in high school right now. And he's probably going to end up going to a welding school, but he also is like the animal whisperer. 
So I love, oh, I love that. Either work with animals and forage on the side or the other way around. My other son has a secondary black belt. He used to teach a t- kids Taekwondo. And now he decided, because he went out into the work, work field after, you know, after high school. School, again, was not his thing. He just never liked it. But now he moved back in and now he's doing online college. So I got my- Very cool. I got my boys back. Um, so, so nice. yeah. So he's, oh, and he's going to um, school to be a, uh, or college to be a computer programmer is that is that is that whatever? oh well we could use them here yeah. yeah no he's super really he's really good at that well i'm serious oh, pianist like he's like this jack of all trades they both are really in they're both a very textured boys but industry no no they're not even impressed with, with me they don't watch my show they're like yeah yeah whatever but then when they were found out i work with jensen i got cool real fast <laughs> so good there you go so What's on the agenda besides filming Big Sky? Well, I've been toying with the idea of, of doing my own po- podcast, which I talked to you about. Um, what I really uh, ultimately would love to, to do is a talk show that bridges all the things that people want to do, to, to, but not like talking at people, talking with people. My talk show will be very different. It's more interactive in the audience. We're all talking about social welfare issues from a macro, meso, and micro perspective, meaning policy, community, and individual. For the individual person, when it comes to biopsychosocial, like I when I talked about addiction, you cannot look at it linear. There's my rescue. Wow, rude. I'm doing a podcast. <laughs> TV. We're TV, honey. We stepped it up. You're going to... Dog spark. I think we're now even, right? Um, so... <laughs> Wow. Maximus, can you help me with the dog? It's okay. You can bring the dog on. You know, real, very real. This is it. I, you don't have to edit that shit out. Um, but I'm hoping to do, I want to be part of the solution. I'm not sure what that looks like. I know where, what it looks like from my heart out. I just have, I'm still figuring out the nuts and bolts. I have some people on board who I really trust and are very good. I went to school with them. So we're trying to come up with like a plan. I have to see what's going on with Big Sky. So people like, people like to know that celebrities are real, that we have the same issue. Okay, maybe not the same issues, but we have issues, right? They just look different. I don't think anybody goes without life's, well, you you follow me on Instagram. Life will throw shit balls at you. It's not a matter of not life, not throwing shit balls at you. It's how you deal with those shit balls when they're thrown at you. People who just have rich, expensive shit balls thrown at them. <laughs> it's true. And it's been great having you on the show. Um, so again, you know, you're a Mupo, you know, you're, she's a partner. She, you're a partner to Mupo. <laughs> Spiritually. I'm, I'm there always. Mentally, everything. We got you, girl. All right, girls. Thank you so much for having me. This has been beautiful and lovely. Go have a beautiful day. And um, thank you for this. To- oh, yeah. The, oh wait, there we go. Yep, you got some of my new photos being all sassafras right there on the cover of Move oh, nice. Magazine. Red is very similar to yours, girl. I'm telling you, man, this picture is just phenomenal. Why yeah. be a Kardashian when you can be a Lucy? Just saying. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Em. You're a Kardashian. You're brunette. No. <laughs> <laughs> I am. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> I'm like the Lucy in the family. But also, uh, new night, Wednesday, September 21st. Huge, amazing cast. And I'll keep you guys posted on whether or not Reba and I find aliens or UFOs. <laughs> oh yeah, and we're. I'm going to tell you. Let's. We're going to. In fact, let's end it, and then we'll. Yeah. I'm going to tell her the story about the alien. Okay, but wait, before we go, make sure you guys look for Dee Dee in Falling Down on Amazon Prime, Sybil on IMBD TV, and Pluto TV on air with Cash Episode 15 on YouTube and in the third season of Big Sky, like she mentioned, on Wednesdays at 10 p.m. Eastern, starting on September 21st. Yay. You can also stream seasons one and two on abc.com or on hulu and you can follow like and subscribe to dd on her instagram facebook youtube tiktok at dd pfeiffer official and on twitter at pfeiffer underscore dd and as always thank you for tuning into mupo and friends courtesy of mupo tv and you can catch this show and many others at www.mupotv.com that's www.mupotv.com and you could also catch us on Roku, Fire Stick and make sure you download the apps on Android and iOS, Mupo Entertainment
This is Emanuela Messina with our host, Michelle Mupo. Until next time. Have a Mupo awesome week. Oh, 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 o